everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Vicious RV with the only 4100 pound Freedom Express 20 SE. And this is a camper, like if I start listing qualities like an extra tall ceiling, carpetless, and a true queen bed, there are a lot, those are desirable qualities certainly, but there's a lot of other campers that do that. Here's the thing that kind of makes this one special. It's a no slide model and getting those features in something with no slide, that is a bit of a tall order and that is not an intentional pun as related to the taller ceiling in this, but I will take it. Um, and that's really what kind of makes this one here stand out to me and special. It still has a full true big pass through up front. It doesn't have like the small door on one side, the big door on the other. It's got surprising storage for a no slide model as well. And really with some very classic features like just a giant closet, right when you walk in the door. That is old school coachman camping that you just don't find everywhere in the marketplace today, you know? For no bigger than it is, I think it's got some very respectable awning space and it still maintains a heated and enclosed belly. It's also still solar prepped. Um, that's the thing, there's so many of the bigger Freedom Express features wrapped up into the smaller package. I, I think it's an easily overlooked, really strong member of their series. Now it doesn't do things like the full nose cap and the windshield of the bigger, heavier, more expensive Freedom Expresses, but that's also some of the reason that it's lighter and less expensive and no windshield in the nose means you don't have like a magnifying glass cooking you like a, like, like a bug on the sidewalk when you were a kid. You ever, you ever do that? Just me? I don't know. Anyway, I mean, I like to cook my food before I eat it. Whatever. Uh, neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> it's it's a fun camper. It's not going to be for everybody, but what RV is? They do some great features in this one, though, and I'd love to hear what you think about it. And uh, I, I think a lot of people might see this one at some point and say, you know, they kind of, oh, it feels like they, they cut a corner here or there. Um, in a market that has unfortunately suffered from a little bit of some runaway pricing, um, you know, uh, as material costs and supply shortages and every other thing kind of affected the, the cost of the build sheet on these, I really commend Coachman for staying disciplined, restrictive, and uh, restrained on these and really still finding a way to build a good functional camper that has a lot of big high points. Um, like I, I'm really, I'm very happy and impressed with everything that they did here. Like, let's talk about some easy features. We're carpetless, we're ventless, and we are no slides. So there is no road mode on this one. It basically just is road mode. Although technically I do suppose uh, for traveling, you do want to put that table down. But uh, speaking of that, let's take a look at that. We got those kind of blackout sort of privacy shades there. And um, that's an elliptical base free floating table, which is nice. You know, they didn't scale down to like a pedestal base table. So if you want to pop it outside, you could do that. You could shimmy it back and forth side to side. You could slide it around wherever you want. And this one's interesting. You've got a full four person dinette plus a little kind of jump seat bonus bench over here. And I know that somebody's OCD might be triggering, like right now, your eye is just going like. You know, it's just like vibrating looking at this, but you could, you could put the smaller cushion over here on the jump seat if you wanted, or you could do like what I've done here. I kind of did that as a bit of a, uh, you know, display piece as it were. Um, the ceiling of this also, like it, the, the darker decor in this one that they're using, it does feel a little bit more impacting on this because it is a smaller space, but that taller 6'9 ceiling, I think still helps uh, open things up nicely. And the thing with this one, it's got better storage than meets the eye, I think. And again, it's just classic Coachman camping kind of storage solutions here. Uh, which rolled off the tongue far better than I expected since I just, I don't script this stuff. Interesting in here, they do an accent light just to kind of help brighten things up. And by the way, if you are looking for something small, but you want to maintain some uh, connectivity, that little plug up there, that goes up to the TV antenna. You can put like a little Wi-Fi or like LTE upgrade thing on that if you're looking for some connectivity options. Notice too, we still have pocket screwed cabinetry. We still have the uh, hidden hinges on here. They don't change the construction of this. They just simplify some of the features, but I really think they don't really like take out anything that really matters. They just, they peel off some of the frosting, some of the fluff, you know? I know this is gonna make, some people are gonna say this is sacrilege, but yeah, have you ever had a piece of cake that just had too much frosting? I'm a sugar fiend, but every now and then I've had a piece of cake around my car. You got to back this down. 
That's kind of what I feel like they did here. They said, all right, let's take off some of that frosting and let's just leave you a good piece of cake. Big closet right by the door. And if you wanted to add some shelving or like a little organizer, shoe organizer, or something like that, it wouldn't be hard. Ooh, you know what else would be really good right here? You know those uh, little hanging kind of like shoe rack jobs? You can just hang it right off the little hanging rack. And this on the back of the RV, I think, is nice because it will keep your hangers in place, whereas a, a rod will cause things to, to slip, slide around uh, all over the place, which, uh, I don't know. When I get to my destination, I'm just like, I'm, I'm tired from towing, and I want stuff to be where I expect it, personally. That's just me. I don't know. You guys ever have that experience? Now, as long as we're talking storage, I figured we'd go ahead and flip around the other way and check out the kitchen. Um, that, is it just me or would that be perfect for like a little wastebasket? I know I harp on, oh, that's easy to miss. Look at this, man. There are power outlets down there. We got power outlets for like a phone charger station in there. There's more power outlets under that overhead cabinet over there. So you might be going, what's the deal? Why is there no outlets in the in the wall of this thing? And that is due to the fact that this the, the wall of this is not thick enough for a household outlet, basically, to, to be up to like wiring code. Big full extension plywood drawers here. And uh, down below, both the sink and the oven, some really good storage space as well. That's the thing. It is a small, unassuming camper. Not a big fancy pants glamper, but I don't think you you need to apologize for that. It just, it's it's just smarter class, as it were. But of course, it still has the utensil drawer. Freedom Express's, uh, it must be patented solution. I don't know, because nobody else is doing it. Perfect little wrap around sink drawer for all of your utensil type needs, I think is awesome. Sealed edge thermofoil counters are something that everybody and their brother does like nowadays, right? Well, you can kind of thank Coachman for it. Basically, Coachman owned the uh, the company that made those. And since Coachman was acquired by Forest River, I don't exactly know how that's changed hands. I just know that you find them all over the place. Funny thing is, a lot of manufacturers own suppliers that fulfill orders for all kinds of different manufacturers. That's extremely common in the RV industry. I'm just sure that the other brands pay more for those countertops than these guys do right here. And while I don't think this is an RV really designed with a lot of seating and entertainment in mind, remember you do have that extended bench back here on the rear wall and the TV can pivot around. So like today it's flirting, it's like raining on and off. And on a day like today, Having that TV there, even if you're just using it almost like radio, just to keep some noise going, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of nice. And by the way, that stovetop vent hood, it does ventilate heat outside of the RV. Now, this is something your feedback on these videos literally made the difference. Freedom Express originally had no plans to uh, allow for a 12-volt DC compressor fridge in this camper. Um, for a while, these came only with a 6-cubic-foot gas electric 2 way which is fine for boondocking. But they have almost doubled the cold storage in this and made it a little more travel safe and faster cooling by opening up this option because you folks spoke up. So when I ask you the same questions all the time, like, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? That's because I think that, um, you know, there's some very specific input that people may have there. And I want to be able to provide that to the factories and, and make the best product we possibly can. Now, the bathroom here. It is tricky because it's no slides kind of in the hallway. It is a little bit tight on the left hand side. Um, it was okay if you're left-handed. I'm sure you could still, still uh, you know, take care of business, as it were. But because it's a shower curtain on the right-hand side, you have plenty of right-hand elbow room. Pardon the uh, power cord. We just haven't quite tucked that away yet. Why? Oh, I don't have the uh, the lights on in here. Um, actually, a good opportunity to discuss the, the light switches because you have the big old drunken uncle uh, paddle switches where you can just kind of slap around in here until you find the switch and then get it done. This does have a smaller, uh, you know, conventional four-inch fart fan for this little bathroom. And it is a small angle shower. It's not a big radius shower. It's not a big rectangular shower. There's just not enough space for it. What it does have, though, is plenty of headroom. And again, I'm okay with that understanding that this is not intended to be some big, giant, full-time and fifth wheel or something like that. It's just a basic camp and travel trailer. It has just enough of everything it needs where it needs it. But they do find uh, opportunity sometimes to go a little bit further, like up here, giving us a true queen bed in this 4,100 pound no slide camper. True queen beds, like this is really hard to find. Um, I think where this camper really kind of has a niche 
there's a lot of people who are like, look, I want to, I, I want something that's not too flashy and fancy. I don't want slides, but I don't want sticking tin campers. That is where I think this one really kind of um, finds its stride, as it were. Now we do have a full underbed storage. You see how it is still totally separated from everything the front pass through. It doesn't have easy lift gas struts, but depending on the type of mattress you have, how heavy it might be, it is not hard to lift the mattress and wedge the the bed platform there. I'm not trying to sell that as like this is a this is an awesome option here. I'm saying it's a potential opportunity or workaround for some folks. Now, if you're looking at this, you're like, I don't, I don't care. I don't care what you say. I want some gas struts on that. I'm sure we can we can come up with something though. It's just a couple screws. It's not real hard to add. And if you go, if you swap out that. Uh, <laughs> factory backbreaker way for a death mattress uh you know it might get a little bit heavier you may want something to to help lift that um good cross breeze windows here in the uh the bedroom as well let me get this bed back down out of the way it's just about that simple right there um this is one of those areas uh any owners out there if you have some input uh, in my head i look at this and i say okay it's an open shelf Maybe some kind of storage baskets might work up here. And what I'm thinking is it's got a lip. Yes. Oh, oh, that's got like a about a, a solid two inch drop right there. So if you do get some kind of storage baskets, they should stay up in that space very nicely. I certainly prefer enclosed cabinet doors, but um, at least with the lip there, it's something that I can work with. And uh, I think I just spit all over the place when I say, I am so sorry. That is... That is gross. TV hookups across from the bed, by the way. Maybe less gross. <laughs> now, if you've been kind of keeping score, you, you sort of have realized that almost all of the real major things that define a Freedom Express are still here. One of the only obvious differences on the outside is just the fact that this has a classic fiberglass nose sweep as compared to uh, the three-quarter nose cap that the, uh, the the Ultralight Series Freedom Express carries. And then in, in the Liberty Edition, you go up to a full top-to-bottom nose cap. Um, it is lighter, it is less expensive, and with no window in the front wall, it will actually help this RV maintain uh, easier like heating and cooling efficiency, which is kind of cool. Um, now, we still have the power tongue jack on the front doing the heavy lifting for us, so when you're getting hitched up to your weight distribution system, you're not sitting there getting tennis elbow cranking a jack up and down or anything like that. And they tongue mount the spare tire right here. Um, which uh, some people have mentioned kind of interfered with their uh, their weight distribution hitch brackets. I don't think we've really seen a lot of that, but maybe we've just been handling Freedom Express here for so many years that we kind of have a, a, a good feel around it. Now, uh, you see the uh, protected uh, piano hinge on the baggage doors here, but you notice it is not a magnet holdback as we find on some of the bigger, fancier models. I don't think it would be hard to add a little magnet right there, but there's not technically a backer in that wall. So personally, I wouldn't go screwing things into it that weren't there, but that's just my two cents. Now up front here, just a huge pass through. This is something that actually has defined Freedom Express uh, nearly since their inception. Freedom Express does not get the credit it deserves for being a brand that has driven the ultralight market forward. Because for so many years, lightweight trailers, they were smaller, they had tiny slides, and Freedom Express was one of the very first ones to come around and say, I'm gonna give you a big full-size, maybe extra large camper with that taller ceiling and everything, but I'm going to do it and still keep the weight in check. And one of the ways that they do that is not by reducing structure, but by using Asdel. And as the, the launch of the 22 model year, um, these are now double Asdel, where you're getting it on both the inside and outside layer of any of the laminated walls. Again, we're still enclosed and heated in the underbelly. I'm not gonna tell you it's a Four Seasons Magic Camper, but it is an awesome extended season model. Asdel actually does help with that uh, heating and cooling a little bit. And you still see the, uh, the gas grill quick connect over there. So in case you wanna add a grill or a griddle or something like that, you're good to go. Outside TV hookups, just kind of a classic thing. Little simulator hubcaps on the uh, more conventional wheels there. Some of that just being a little bit of a symptom of this being in the little more aggressive SE price point as compared to the, the bigger Ultralight series. Now, um, now, normally, I do believe you would still find a ladder on these. Uh, this is ladder capable to my knowledge, unless this floor plan is something special. And I feel like I just scared that guy off. He was just dropping off a fifth wheel and then he bolted. Um, but it does give us easier ability to walk around the camper. So I'm going to roll with it. Uh, also, this has the 
Infamous, RV Nerdism number 37, the junk in the trunk storage system. Which is made a lot easier to access, thankfully, by the fact that this RV does not have the spare tire mounted on the rear bumper. But notice it does still maintain a rear bumper. Now, if uh, you talk to the, the legal eagles and the muckety mucks at uh, Coachman, they're going to say, don't put anything on the bumper, blah, blah, blah. But if you talk to anybody who actually you know, works and builds these things, they will specifically tell you they left that rear bumper open in the event that somebody wanted to do something like add a bike rack. Now it's, you're not fighting it with a spare tire and you're not trying to balance the weight of a spare tire and a bike back there, which I've actually seen damage some things before. You know, logic, uh, like in point of fact, I, I really should tell you, put as little back there as you possibly can, uh, even, even as far as putting nothing on the rear bumper. But I know people do it all the time, and I know why Coachman does what they do. Now, uh, we don't have a ladder on the back of this one, so I can't get you up to the roof, but it is a fully walkable roof. Uh, it's interesting. This is a laminated lightweight RV, but they do still kind of stick with a little more heavy-duty stick-built roof so that it is both walkable and, and great for things like snow loads. Um, it's also roof solar prepped standard, and you can get a 175-watt factory solar package on these. This is also kind of interesting to me. They do split TV hookups, Maybe handy for people who have split personalities, or maybe if you are a common house fly with compound eyes and you need multiple things to capture your attention all at the same time, which I swear is how my daughter is becoming. She will sit there watching something like, she'll watch a YouTube video of like a gamer on TV. And then she's watching a YouTube video of that game simultaneously on her phone and I don't even understand how she is able to simultaneously process both streams of information at once. I lack that gift. Um, <laughs> I think it's I think it's just the way kids are nowadays with all the screens in front. They can just soak it all up like a sponge, you know. One of the other things I think is really cool about this, especially being a member of the SE series, is that the Freedom Expresses are now coming with a, uh, a TPMS system standard. Even here on the mostest, basicest, simplest series that they make, which uh, I'm, I'm sure my English teacher would, would, would be uh, just absolutely rolling her eyes at me right now, but you get the idea. Um, they're not skimping where it matters. That's kind of the message that I have with this entire video. The big hitter features, the things that really matter, they're all still here. It's just not loaded with fluff stuff that jacks up the price tag and, and adds a bunch of weight to it. And you know, I'd like to dedicate today's video to Mr. William Schooley. He is actually uh, one of our clients, and he purchased uh, through us the predecessor version of this floor plane, the 204RD from the Freedom Express Ultralight Series, before it rolled into the SE Series here. And I will be very surprised if we don't see Mr. Schooley in the comments, and I have to say, I, I appreciate how you challenge me sometimes, sir. Not just for the, um, like, you asked, the, the tougher questions that dig below the surface and you've helped me learn and be better about this um, and, which I think has helped a lot of people so uh, everyone give Mr. Schooley just a, a quick round of applause as it were and say thank you and short of that if you like what we do here showing you the ups and the downs and everything in between make sure you hit that subscribe button and like our video and until next time folks take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone